subscription revenue calculations, and the Apple Watch's health capabilities. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Text Expander by Smile, the makers of world class software. Visit TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn more and download your free demo. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is part two in our Mac Voices Live discussion of Apple's quarterly financial results. We continue with a discussion that started in part one about uh, the supply chain issues that Apple may face in the future. Then we shift over to the subscription information that was released and how it may or may not have been calculated. And also start a conversation about the Apple Watch's health capabilities and where they may be going. Let's go right back and let the panel do the talking. And Mark, something that they, something else that I, the way I read it or heard it, um, that they're not as concerned necessarily about Apple-related constraints or Apple Apple part-related constraints, but just industry-related constraints for those things. So that's a problem that's not just going to be faced by Apple, but it's going to be faced by any PC manufacturer out there. Right. Because so, again, I think if we just wanted to do a quick guided you know, summary of you know, the so-called semiconductor crisis, it's not that capacity was taken offline. It's that you're driven by COVID, you know, the demand, not just for Macs, but you know, all sorts of other uh, you know, PC, Windows-based PCs you know, is up you know, 30 to 40 percent year over year. And that's just sucked up all the available capacity for low-tech uh, semiconductors like diodes and things like that. And you know, yes, they did a good job of pointing out that you know, for you know their silicon, you know, the M ones and M whatever is coming up. You know, they have plenty of capacity. It's the it's the commodity stuff. You know, the you know, the, the diodes that uh, you know you have to put on these devices, and you have to put in cars and washing machines and air conditioners and everything else. That's a big area where uh, there are supply shortages. So it's not the that it's not that Apple can't get enough of you know, their five micron, sorry, five nanometer, uh, you know, M one devices. Sorry, as, back to you. As someone who yeah. just bought a car, I feel that. <laughs> uh, you mean you, get? you mean the the price pinch? The price the price pinch is one, but also the pressure um, that. Banks are having. Uh, I think Jim asked. I got a got a Mazda three. Oh, yeah. What was your lead time? And get the plan. I we went with what was on the lot, which wasn't much. Um, <laughs> and basically, the reason why we went with what was on the lot was we actually had car problems, so we we knew we needed a vehicle. But uh, it was either y- you can choose from our limited option, or you can wait three months. Uh, hmm. Wow. Um, to, to go back to Jace to something you said, I want to make sure we had said something about this in the pre-show, but um, they said that Mass Mutual um, is offering M1 MacBook Pros for all of its employees and equipping all conference room with M1 Mac Minis in preparation for return to work. Wow. So, you know, I think this I, I, that's and, and um, Mike, you said something about the what the Italian company. But, you know, I think it's interesting that sure, they're going to make hay out of out of large organizations that are choosing to go Mac, but it seems like there are more of them and it's becoming a lot more acceptable. Yeah. That's the thing that was interesting to me is that they called out those stories in the call. Maybe they've done that in the past too, but it just felt kind of weird. Kind of like mentioning that they've got 35 Emmy nominations. <laughs> and yeah. of course, you know why they did, did that because Apple TV plus and all of the focus on the services, which by the way, that was another thing that just kind of boggled my mind. They called out 700 million subscriptions. And I'm glad somebody brought that up. That yes. was stunning. Yeah. That's a lot. Emmy That's a lot. And it's for Ted Lasso. You can you can look back at over the last several years, and they kind of address this specifically how much they've grown their services revenue. I kind of don't know where the low hanging fruit is now, but obviously they want to increase the number of subscriptions. Oh, uh, it's bundles. Apple One bundles. <laughs> Does yeah. that include free trials? Because you know, if twenty million people buy a brand new device, I could be wrong, but well, I think they called out seven hundred million paid subscriptions. They did, that, they did, mm-hmm. and I thought they but said that's not one all billion Apple or... TV Plus. Correct. That's iCloud, right? And yeah, so they're they're probably one. counting me for five, you know, 
Right. So what do they sell you next for six, seven, and eight? <laughs> well, they made a big deal out of the Apple One bundles too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, yeah, and so I've got one of those saves money. Yeah, I, I need to do that. But but well, what they're gonna do is you know, and that number might even go down if people get Apple One. Does that, you know, if I get Apple One, does that mean I have one subscription now instead of, or or are they going to count that as, you know, six or whatever it is? Yeah. Um, Apple's always kind of fuzzy with these numbers that they, yeah, you know. Yeah, because they don't want to declare they, what the they, numbers they are. They throw out numbers for all kinds of things, and it's just like, uh, you know what, I don't even listen to what you say because, you know. <laughs> so actually both Tim and Luca, and Luca said it so many times that we have a record number of our iPhone installed base, you know, record number, record number, oh, yeah. record number. And, you know, not a single analyst took the bait and asked him, you know, how 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 many are they? <laughs> not that he would have told him, of I, course, but, you know. I thought somebody did, and they said, we don't say that. But that's how you get uninvited to the call. No, I thought that's when he said about uh, <laughs> clarified about the seven million, seven hundred million paying subscribers, yeah, you know, and you, you know, you're right. Some somebody did ask about him, and he then they later clarified. You know, I think over a billion, you know, iPhone devices, and then they, I don't think they gave more information about how many uh, iPad devices they have in the installed base yeah 700 million those those stick right in the beginning of the call they said that i know someone mentioned it being let like disadvantageous of them to have more people signing up for apple one because i guess it, it drops that number but I, I think that's even better because if you say like even though we were able to like we didn't grow as much as we did. I don't think they're ever going to shrink, but we didn't grow as much as we thought we would, but our revenue was higher. Cause I can tell you now we have Apple one. And when we did the math based on what we use, what we actually use versus what we could be using, we're spending more money, but it's, it's, it's almost like that cable TV package. Like, yeah, I might watch ESPN seven. If I want, you know, if nothing else is on, I might use Apple <laughs> fitness. I might look at Apple news plus, I'm not going to look at Apple News Plus, but, okay, but I would. Nobody is. But I would give Apple the benefit of the doubt and assume that you know they, you know, are probably measuring unique credit cards. You know, so that if if Jim is using the same credit card for three services, that he only gets counted once instead of. I three would times. not give him that benefit of the doubt. <laughs> that <would> be... <laughs> <laughs> You're a trustworthy person, there, Mark. <laughs> you know, if that was the case, I wish they would just send me one email with the receipts. I get all these, you know, your your card was charged two ninety nine, four ninety nine. I'm like, what was that? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I kind of this thought it was. I'd like to talk to you about. Yeah. I, that, that's the biggest reason why I, I really need to do the Apple One thing, so that hopefully I just don't get all these little charges on my credit card every month. What was that? What was that? Well, but Apple even One, if you take, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Apple One bundling the things together does make it stickier because you look at, oh, look at this value I'm getting, even if you're yeah. not going to use the other services. I mean, we save money using. Apple One, but I'm not really using Apple TV. I'm not using Fitness Plus. And so I think there's a point of diminishing returns that we are at where you just throw in another service and it doesn't really add that much more value. I feel like there's a lot of low hanging fruit that's already been been done. Even Fitness Plus, like that's essentially like a Peloton, Peloton type Junior competitor. There's not a whole lot of, there's some, you know, but there's not a whole lot of overlap there, I would say, between Apple users and Peloton users. And I just don't see where they go from here. It's not a clear path forward. Um, and I feel like we're going to get a bunch of these other services because this is Apple's focus more on the periphery and it's going to lose the value of like one more thing being added to the, the bundle. It's going to get to the point pretty quickly where people are going to be going the other way and picking and choosing, well, I don't want all this stuff. So I'm going to pick this one over here and this one over there. And at that point, Mike, I have a question for you. So you know, there's rumors out, out there about, you know, next generation of Apple watch or you know, having uh, 
having glucose or blood oxygen uh, you know, you know, meter, you know, if they were to couple that with some sort of monitoring service, uh, would that change your, your thinking about Apple services and how much they could grow? It could. It could. That seems a very un y approach to it, to me. It feels like a cash grab, which the, it seems like the other services, they've been very careful to say, well, the, like with Apple One, they made it kind of a no-brainer deal. If you even use a couple of those, you are actually going to save money if you buy the whole thing. Right. And when they did the iCloud Plus, oh, it's the same price, but you're getting all this extra stuff on top of it. I feel like there would be an adverse reaction if they just started saying a la carte slot machine in that purchase style. You pay for this one, you pay for this one. Yeah, <laughs> I could that's be wrong. I mean, that's a very, the medical field specifically, like there's, People pay a ton of money for those devices. Uh, my family business that I grew up in was special education. And I remember when the iPad came out, like the apps like Proloquo, like the speech apps, you know, those on an iPad were even with a really expensive app like that, a couple hundred bucks, that was like that plus the iPad, one tenth of like a dedicated speech device that mm -hmm. insurance companies would pay for. So I don't know enough about the medical side of it to to say, but there's definitely money to be made there too. Well, the thing they're doing with the watch, I know they've gotten like several, they're slowly getting medical networks to sign into it. And Apple's very careful to always explain that this does not like, oh, okay, let's say you're using your ECG on your phone. They're very careful to say, this does not in any way replace going to your doctor and seeing it. All this does is say, hey, you may want to take a look at this. Call somebody. Yep. And I think yep. that's I think that's more than fair. Well, they have to, otherwise it would be a medical device and the licensing and right. you know but still, that they would yeah, have to still, do and they'd, they'd have to do trials and yep. you know. Right. I agree. But what I'm saying is I don't know that they're looking to go to that arena. Correct. The other thing uh -huh. is just to give you a, a heads up, say, hey, why don't you go over there and get this checked? Mm -hmm. There's nothing and in it for them financially, except that you're alive to buy another Apple device. Yeah, yeah I think that's I an have industry a... they're not concerned about. I mean, I know Google is, I know that Amazon is, like all of these other companies are, like they want to be able to do stuff with that data. I think what Apple is doing is, uh, continuing to fight the uh, your data, your place. Um, that said, I could see that's health right. Plus. Your data, your body. We monitor it. You know, we don't. We we won't make money off of your data, but you know, we'll give you an alarm that hey, you know, <laughs> this or that looks you know, abnormal. Yeah, and we noticed this thing. You know, thirty seven point three days ago, and you should go take a look at it. You know, I well, think that's. I think that would be consistent with sort of Apple's approach, don't you, Jay? I agree with that. I just, again, I, I think at the end of the day, it, it comes to the, uh, the machine in the room of Siri and, and wanting to rely on <clears throat> Siri notifying me about health concerns when I can't rely on Siri to turn the lights on properly. Okay, see, um, now that's, I'm sorry, Jake. Go ahead. But I, I think that's where you have, again, you have, you have two sides of this. You have, Apple doing what they do really good, which is saying, we can protect your data. We can make sure that your data is safe on your device. All the machine learning and stuff that happens, whether it be great or not, happens on your device. And that that's not a, a critique of their, their service. That's just stating what they do. Then you have companies like, well, you have companies like Amazon, which no one knows what Amazon's doing. And then you have companies like mm -hmm. Google that are saying- They're running in space. We're not, <laughs> yeah. Um, Google is saying, we're not even going to concern with what you're doing on your device health wise, we're going to go straight to the providers, sign deals with them and get anonymized health data to do what we do from that area. Mm -hmm. So in a way, like you feel like you are safe until you authorize your health data to go to your doctor, which your doctor winds up sending to Google anyway. Um, but <laughs> again, it's, it's everyone playing to their strengths, which I don't think is a bad thing. I just think that Apple at the end of the day, isn't going to want to, poke that bear too much because there is no monetary benefit to it. Right. More people are going to buy the device because of it. 
This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of Text Expander. I know I'm busy, and I bet you are too. Busy at work, busy at home, busy everywhere. But there's always that drive and desire to do just a little more, just a little faster, just a little better. And that's where Text Expander can help. By turning your most frequently typed paragraphs, email responses, answers to customers' questions, and the like into Text Expander snippets, you get the faster component because only a few keystrokes turns into those paragraphs or pages of information. That means you automatically can do more because you've got more time on your hands. And the better part comes in the form of consistency. The right answer the first time, the right answer every time, and a consistent answer when you use that snippet and everything spelled correctly to boot. Something as simple as your email address or phone number is a candidate for a snippet. Something as complex as pages of boilerplate document language or line after line of HTML code is a candidate for a snippet. In short, anything you can type can be done better, faster, and easier with Text Expander. Right now, visit TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn all about Text Expander for yourself and or your business. It is my most frequently used productivity utility, and I think it will be yours too. TextExpander.com slash podcast. Thanks to Smile for being the longest running sponsor of Mac Voices. Yeah, so they I love the Apple Watch and I love the stories that they tell with it. Every single time they have an event, oh, the Apple Watch saved my life. Like, that's really cool. If you're going to monetize that, how is that different? Like, oh, it looks like you're having a heart attack. Want us to notify <laughs> your doctor? Let us scan your face first for $1.99 a month. <laughs> like, I, don't know, I don't know why I just uh, saw Clippy saying, hey, it looks like you're having a heart attack. I, 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 I think they monetize that by selling the device. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're not going to monetize yeah. that yeah. By, by, you know, and, 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 you know, the flip side is, let's say they did, did charge $5 a month. And somebody had a heart attack, and it didn't notice notify them. Are they liable? You know, well, you know, for sure. <laughs> you know, you can sue over that. anything, and you know, if you're taking money, um, that you know, I think is going to set you know set up a liability issues. So changes the rules. You know, I mean, you know, it's already got. You know, it measures my pulse all the time. There, my watch doesn't have the oxygen, but um, you know that's already a thing. Um, you know, the glucose is one that you know I'm fascinated by because uh, I don't know if you can see that. Can you? There we oh, go. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Yep. It's uh, the freestyle. Okay. So oh. you know, I'm diabetic. I get my 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 my, and so that's a thing that has to be replaced every two weeks. Um, and it's seventy five dollars a month, which is the you know the copay. I'm sure it's more than that to the insurance company. So the idea that Apple is going to be able to do this with something that is not consumable, you know, I mean, maybe they will, but you know, wow, that just you know that that's like an entirely other um, level beyond what the current technology is. But again, but again I. I, I go back to where you open this with is there's a difference between some sort of advisory versus, you know, a fully qualified therapeutic or monitoring device. And we don't know enough about what Apple might be doing in their technology to know if they want to actually cross that line. If they do, I mean, my God, you know, that would be, uh, you know, well, every, you know, and the thing is in the country I, or in the world I, would get one, I think. Well, sure. But except I think that's not a big enough market for Apple. It, it's that's, not that that's not an Apple kind of a market. That's not, it, you know, they have to sell something to everybody or have the but, chance to. But, so, but, but I, um, I look at it in a slightly different perspective. You know, the market for Apple is everybody's wrist. This is one more feature to convince, you know, yeah, certain I'm, I'm number not, of tens of millions I'm, of more people to buy it. I'm not saying that they won't do it. If, you know, if they can figure out how to do it, they'll do it, but it will not be marketed as a, you know, a medical device for diabetics. Oh, of course not. I mean, you know, of there's people, not. there's bicyclists now, you know, that use these for training to, you know, see how their glucose levels go. In fact, the UCI has banned it for, for competition. They're not allowed to use it in the tour de France uh, for some odd reason, because the UCI is just idiots. But um, so, you know, I, <laughs> I, I think if, you know, if Apple does add a glucose sensor, they're not going to say this is for diabetics. They're going to say this is just for everybody and you'll be able to get, 
you know, a better idea of what's going on in your body and what your nutrition level is. And, and, you know, they may even right. have a thing saying, if you are diabetic, don't rely on this. Um, right. I, you know, but again, I think the, I, I think the, I think the thing is, is you know, as they add more features or other things, you know, they just want to sell more of their devices, you know, to right. their target market. And it's, it's just another point, you know, to, to, uh, to strap you in, pardon the pun. Uh, and, you know, just, you know, pull you in and keep you into the, uh, I, I think we're all agreeing that they're probably not going to add this as a five dollar a month, no. you know, some sort of medical yeah. thing, you know, whatever, I think whatever, whatever other though. services they may do. And, you know, it's hard to think of like they've already got TV, gaming, iCloud, you know, talk about money grab um, news Dating software, blue bubbles only. Dating. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think Apple's going to do dating software. <laughs> I do. That would be interesting. <laughs> so, so a couple things here. First of all, um, yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that Apple wants to be a medical device company. Webb points out something very obvious in the chat room. On the medical front, the class action attorneys will have a field day, and Apple wants nothing to do with that. And I, I think that's smart. On the other hand, you know, it can be a very useful device. You know that that improves. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be diagnostic level to have a benefit. I mean, certainly the Fitbit is not a diagnostic device, but, you know, that that's a hot property. Um, you know, walk in your local drugstore and you can find plenty of things that aren't necessarily medical grade devices like uh, blood pressure cuffs. You know, there are plenty of them out there that and, and my doctor has told me, look, you know, I'm not I'm not as worried about it being deadly accurate as I am about you taking it and seeing what the trend is. And then, you know, bring that trend to me and we'll take your blood pressure here in the office and, you know, we'll see what maybe the differential is so we can figure out, you know, is, is yours off by five points, 10 points? Really doesn't matter if we know that you're really high or really low. That's that's what we're interested in. Uh, pregnancy tests. I mean, I don't think there are any guarantees on pregnancy tests, but they're certainly all over the drugstores and they're selling like hotcakes. So I think but there's plenty that, of evidence. Those out are medical. There. Well, that's you, a you diagnostic can't, I, you device. Can't, you can't just go and, you know, I can't start selling pregnancy tests. That That's a thing that's licensed and, you know, tests are required. And Yeah, but they're um, all kind of just claimers all over it, Jim. You know, that with this, you know, this is not, we do not guarantee 100% accuracy. Well, you know, if you go to do labs at, at Quest, that's not 100% accurate either. No, but um, it's a higher degree. It's a, it's a much higher degree. Yeah. Frank, you wanted yeah, to have a point you wanted to bring in. Yeah, I want to say as someone who actually uses the Apple Watch as a medical device, because I I'm sure the panel knows I have multiple sclerosis. I initially bought the Apple Watch when they came up with the fall detection that if I went unconscious, it would automatically dial 911. Now, unfortunately, in the last two months. I've now had some heart issues. And so I have to keep an eye on that. Now, what I do is I have to keep every now and then, if I feel that my chest feels a little tight or something, I just do an ECG and I know what the parameters of where my BPM should land. If it doesn't land there or it's going wildly back and forth, then I know it's my job to call my doctor and say, this is what happened. Do you want me to set an appointment with you or go into the hospital? I don't see Apple making any claims that this is going to replace the medical industry. This is not going to be the $6 million doctor. This is something to give me a heads up to be aware. It's, 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 like, it's like nutrition. You know, you learn, you know, what nutrients you need, how many carbs you should take, how much protein. And I'm saying from a medical standpoint, for me, it's a freaking boon. That's just the sole reason I bought the watch. Frank, can I ask a question? Sure. 
I, the model watch I have doesn't have that capability. When you run it, what do you get at the end? Do you, do you get a, do you get a, you know, do you just get a red light, green light, you know, pass fail, or do you get more information? What, ECG? What, yes. It, it will give you the number of what it has as your beats per minute. Okay. Well, it and gives you an EKG. It gives you this heart strip with the. Yeah, but it it's, does, a, it's, it, a, does, it's a two lead EK, ECG. And it sends it to your phone. And you can you could then email it to your doctor. So okay. some places will take it, but I use it basically. Uh, as well, I just, mean, you can measure hey, your beats me per minute up. without doing an ECG. Yeah, the series. Not I with my series fingers. I have no touch with my multiple sclerosis. I have no way of feeling that. Oh, but no, no, no. With the that. watch, you just. Well, no. Oh, you, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. yeah, that's what I use the watch with. Or you can turn right, on but the you don't, monitor you, you don't, and just you, watch your beats per minute go back and forth. Right. You don't need to do an ECG to just get the beats. Yeah, but that's the thing kind is of the overkill. ECG will let you know if you're possibly. It will detect. It may detect arrhythmias. Right. Right. And for that alone, I it won't, think it's it, worth it. it. It won't tell you about a heart attack, but it, it could no, tell it you about arrhythmia. And it says that right there, right, right under the ECG. This is in no way going to inform you if you are having a heart attack, if you're set for a heart attack. But it's saying that if something just doesn't look kosher, you should call, call a professional. Got it. Yeah, it, it does look for arrhythmia, a certain kind of arrhythmia. Yeah. But, it, you know, just for the beats per minute, you know, you can just... It, you know, it's monitoring that all the time. And if I'm worried about it, I'll do a cool down workout and then I could just continuously what, you know, and, you know, actually I had a thing, I, I don't know what it was, but a couple of months ago, you may remember I mentioned I was in the hospital and part yeah, of that was right. uh, detected because of the, my watch noticed right. that my, my beats per minute was, was, you know, up like 20 over what it was normally. And, Whatever it was, it, there was something there because it eventually, slowly over a couple of weeks, normalized. Yeah. Um, and and I was able to really watch it you with my watch. Health. It was great. You know your body better than the doctor does. Yeah. And and it was funny watches. because in the in the hospital, they you know the the doctor came in and took my pulse, and I'm like, yeah, we could just press this button on my watch, and he's like, well, let's see if that's right. <laughs> You know, which I it was it was no it was lie. exactly it was exactly matched what he got but no lie i went to my cardiologist the other day just before they did their 12 was it 12 or 13 sensors they put on you yeah. i did my uh bpm on my watch i was off by one beat well which that's Nothing. not really even yeah, you know, there, there's a significant digits there, so that me that that's essentially accurate. I I, I was yeah, looking well, on Amazon a little while ago. The, they they now have the a there's an EKG device you can buy on Amazon that I think it's about 150 dollars. And as I recall, I think you put it on your knees and and you and you touch it, and it does like eight leads, and um and apparently is like pretty close to a uh you know, hospital style EKG that you can do yourself. They're still going to um, insist that and, they and do it though, and, when you get to the hospital. Oh, of course they're going to, but you know, and there, there was a bunch of people it. on the, on the Amazon reviews that were claiming to be cardiologists saying this thing is awesome. There was also sure a bunch is, of the, uh, the skill is doctors in the that were paid in the forties to say, Hey, sugar is fine. It's oil. <laughs> it's the fats and the oils that are killing you. And tobacco is not a problem. Well, well, what yeah. some of these people were Same saying thing. is because sometimes people have, uh, you know, like the the what they were saying was, yeah, but this gives something that you can give to the cardiologist to look at. And sometimes, you know, people don't necessarily have the problem when they're in the doctor's office cooked up to the machine. So this allows you to, you know, like, oh, I'm not feeling good. Boom. Immediately take it, send it. And the doctor's like, oh, yeah, look, that's a problem. I know exactly what that is, but by the time they get to the, you know, do the real, the test at the doctor's office, the, it's not doing it anymore. Right. But you got to remember that American that. healthcare system is still a capitalistic system. Yeah. 
they're going to give you the dang test just because they're making a buck off the insurance company. Bringing it back oh. to that serve Apple services, though, I think that 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 becomes a part of the the appealing offer is what if we're just taking all this data and we're sending it to your doctor for you? What if we're, we're just making sure that that relationship between you and your doctor is handled through our secure enclave of devices that we have? What if we can also relay that to your insurance provider as well to make sure that the things that you're most worried about can now like already be taken care of? And I mean, I know this is a very socialist healthcare dream that I have where it's like, if I'm sick, I go to the doctor. I don't think about what insurance I have. I don't think about you know, ultimately how long I'm going to wait and what I'm going to have to pay. I just go to the doctor. But I do see that as being a possibility of Apple saying, you know what, we can trust that we can put a blue bubble between you, your doctor, your insurance provider. When they go and they say, hey, we need to check your vitals and all this other stuff, they can match that vital right then and there with your historical record of data right there to give them a more accurate response and for some people, they will pay the extra amount because guess what? It'll be subsidized by insurance companies that'll say, hey, if you do this, we'll cut off $5 off of your health insurance. In the third and final part of our discussion on Mac Voices Live about Apple's quarterly financial results, we wrap up the discussion of Apple Watch as an almost medical device, talk about whether Apple will or will not be at NAB and what the implications of that are, and touch on Mac stock. That's next time on Mac Voices, and I hope you'll join us. Until then, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page, and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.